What's up guys, Techland here. Now in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at another new mini PC from B-Link. This one is a fully AMD based system and you've got to check it out because this thing is incredible. So the mini PC that we'll be taking a look at today is the brand new B-Link SER8. Not to be confused with the previous model, this one has had some slight changes to the hardware inside, which has effectively made it a little bit cheaper. So we all kind of agree with that. The unit is very small. It's actually just about the size of my hand and it's pretty much got all of the features on the outside that you really want. In terms of front IO, we have a power switch, which also acts as a reset. We have a combined microphone and headphone jack, a USB-C connection, and a USB 3. Then if we turn the unit around on the back, we do have a large selection at the top that is actually a ventilation spot. That is where the uh, warm air will get ventilated out of the system. And it actually draws all the cool air through the bottom. There is actually a built in mesh inside of here, so you can actually clean it. So if you're not gonna get too much dust in there. So that's actually a pretty cool feature. When we come to the rest of the IO on the back, we have three USB 3 connections, an ethernet port, a DP connection, and a HDMI. That will mean that we can actually have a dual output on this unit. We also have a headphone jack, a secondary USB-C connection, just in case you need it, and a power socket, which is slightly different to the previous model that we took a look at, the Intel-based one. Overall though, I think the unit is very cool. It's very small and it looks very modern, so it's gonna look pretty good on everybody's desks. But the biggest difference in terms of this system compared to the previous SER8 is in fact the hardware inside. This new model comes with the AMD Ryzen 7 8745HS. That is an eight core 16 thread processor. And it is the major difference between this one and the older version because what they've done is they've removed all the AI gump from it, things that people are generally not interested in at the moment. And it's made the unit considerably cheaper. That's always a good win for us. When it comes to RAM, it currently has 32 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 5600 megahertz. For storage, we have a one terabyte Gen 4 NVMe SSD, which means this unit is gonna stay pretty fast. And then of course, when it comes to the GPU in this unit, it is using an integrated AMD Radeon 780M. That actually does mean that this unit can game on its own, so it doesn't require any kind of additional functionality like the previous GT12 that we looked at, which came with a dock and a graphics card capabilities. This thing can actually stand up quite well on its own. When we actually do come to compare it with the previous model that we looked at, the GT12 series, we can see that it is considerably smaller in size. And the way that they've managed to achieve this is by doing what some of you recommended they should have done on the previous model, and that is, externalize the power supply. This one comes with an external brick to power it and you have a simple connection into the back. So they've managed to keep the size down, which makes it even more compact. Just like the previous GTI model that we looked at, this one is just as upgradable. You do have two NVMe slots inside of it. So you can always upgrade by adding an extra SSD. It also has a built-in SSD cooler there, so you can pretty much get away with putting anything on there. And that's actually a really nice feature that they included, which I didn't spot on the GT12. It also has the ability to upgrade the RAM and it will take quite a lot. It currently has two sticks of 16 gigabytes of DDR5, basically laptop memory, and you can always pop them out and upgrade them. So it has a great upgradability feature, although your CPU is of course soldered in, so you can't really change the CPU in these, but you probably won't need to anyway. Now, when it comes to normal Windows based tasks, things like streaming videos, Netflix, stuff like that, this unit has more than enough power to be able to do it. It's actually quite a fast system and it's very modern. So there's no point us really testing that kind of stuff. The only thing that we're really interested in here is how well it can game. And this thing is absolutely incredible. Long gone are the days where we have to test integrated graphics with things like Half-Life 2 with a unit like this. It's absolutely pointless. We did do it though and we got some fantastic results. Running the game in 4K with the highest preset you can manage to get over 100 frames per second with an average of 72 on the 1% lows. That is absolutely incredible for an integrated graphics like this, especially when it is on the latest version of that game, which has had a few enhancements. So if testing Half-Life 2 is out of the question, what kind of games can this thing play? Well, let's go find that out. So we've got the little system hooked up to the monitor and everything is working fine. The unit is very, very quiet. I expected it to be much louder than it is, particularly with the size of fans that they include in these. 
it is drawing more than enough air through the system even on a low fan setting which is keeping things nice and cool inside of windows it is very snappy as i suggested before nothing takes that long to load it's very quick you can do all sorts of streaming on this which makes it perfect for like a media center and i'm pretty sure that's what most people use little pcs like this for usually they are used for things like office work and you can just take them between the office and home or people strap them to the back of their tvs and monitors as a media center and then i like to do a little bit of gaming on them too which is really nice to have a unit like this because it means i probably can now when we do test things in the studio we tend to test them out of the box we don't change anything but for this unit i've made an exception and that is increasing the vram for the built-in graphics the reason for this is because i think it could have done with a little bit more i don't know why they defaulted it to just four gigabytes but you can literally upgrade it instantly by increasing that vram in the bios it's a simple change you can just find it in the menu and you can change it between 4 8 and 16 gigabytes this unit having 32 gigabytes of ram and because it is shared with the graphics you could actually set it to a 16 gigabytes and have pretty plenty of space there as well as having 16 gigabytes for the rest of the system and it would still run perfectly fine but I've actually adjusted it into the middle and I've given it eight gigabytes. Hopefully that is enough to be able to provide some high level textures and things and some games should run much better with it. The game that I want to be testing today is one that I've wanted to replay for a while now with my son. It is a co-op game. It is World War Z. I don't know if this unit will really play it that well, but we'll get into the actual game see what kind of configuration we can set up and as long as we can get a near 60 fps experience even in just 1080p i'm going to be pretty happy with that so the game has loaded and everything is starting to look pretty good we're currently getting an average of 59 frames per second with a one percent low of 55 everything seems to be running reasonably smooth there is no jerkiness there's no stuttering uh everything looks okay graphically it's probably not the best that i've ever seen this game but it is giving us a better than console based experience so far or at least the older generation console but first we'll head over to the settings and see what we've got configured in our video settings we've currently using a graphics api of vulcan this system will support that we have a resolution of 1080p we are going to be leaving vsync and set fps limit on to 60 fps as long as we can get 60 fps experience we're going to be pretty happy here and pretty much everything else is set to a medium of course we do have access to amd's fsr technology and for this game we've got fsr super resolution 2.2 set to a quality setting which should be perfectly fine i'm going to leave the settings on this game to exactly where they are where the system has chosen it and we'll see if the performance maintains as we get more things on screen heading back into the game now we'll just go over to here we'll empty this door for anybody that hasn't played this game before and you're into your zombie shooters it's definitely worth checking out it is a point to point game where you have to just survive but it is co-op you can have up to three other players with you so it's four player co-op in total and it is great fun to play they also do drop lots of updates for it and you get lots of new features so that's not bad and usually they are free even though i don't think the last one was but we've got lots of zombies now coming at us on the screen and everything is being maintained we've currently got an average of 59 frames per second we're still with a one percent low of now around 39 i suspected that that would happen particularly with the amount of enemies that we will get on screen here i probably wouldn't adjust the settings any different to this now because i think the one percent lows will suffer if we do but overall everything seems to be running perfectly smooth this is pretty impressive for a tiny little system like this using built-in integrated graphics i did not expect it to run this well i thought maybe we'd have to go for like a 720p kind of resolution but so far everything is looking good i'm actually pretty impressed with how well this game is running on this little tiny mini pc getting 60 fps on world war z which is not the most demanding game in the world but it's it, it does test some hardware out there is absolutely incredible but if you think this is incredible you have to check out some of these cyberpunk 2077 is a game that you would never have played on an integrated graphics back when it was released but now things have moved on in 1080p with a medium preset while enabling FSR 3 with a quality setting and frame generation, which you do have available, so why wouldn't you use it? You can get an average of 69 frames per second with a 1% low of 57. 
Even at these settings, the game looks perfectly fine, it runs beautifully smooth, and it gives you a much better experience than the console versions of the game. This is absolutely amazing for a little PC to be able to achieve this, particularly with a title as popular as this. So anybody out there that just wants to give Cyberpunk 2077 a go, you can definitely do it on this mini PC. Dead Island 2 has always been a well-optimized game. It is reasonably new, and I didn't expect it to perform as well as it did on this mini PC. Running the game in 1080p, but this time with a low preset while enabling FSR 2 with a quality setting, you can get an average of 64 frames per second with a 1% low of 35. The low 1% low here is pretty average for any kind of hardware really, it tends to be about half of what the average FPS is, but the game still looks great with a low setting and it is more than playable with this kind of performance. Doom Eternal here needs no help from the magic of AMD software. Running the game in 1080p with a high preset, you can easily achieve 69 frames per second on average with a 1% low of 57. The game looks absolutely beautiful. It performs extremely well, very smooth, and you can complete it end to end. It is not the most demanding game out there in the world, and it is reasonably old now, but it really goes to show what kind of level we're getting with mini PCs nowadays. This game would actually probably replace things like Half-Life 2 as a test for integrated graphics going forward which is a fantastic sight to be seen because it is still a great game to play. I expected Spider-Man Remastered to be quite difficult to play on this system and it did require a little bit of help from AMD's FSR. Running the game in 1080p with a medium preset we did need to enable FSR 3 with a quality setting and frame generation. The frame generation here just really helped bring up all of those 1% lows because the game averagely did pretty well. It managed to achieve an average of 66 frames per second with a 1% low of 47, more than playable and it gave you a great experience throughout. Stray is another game that works perfectly fine on this system. It was extremely popular even though it wasn't that demanding when it was released and unfortunately you don't have access to any fancy tools for upscaling from AMD here but running the game in 1080p with a medium preset we could easily achieve an average of 63 frames per second with a 1% low of 43. That means that the game is more than playable and it provides a pretty decent experience as well. The last game in our testing was Red Dead Redemption 2. It's not the latest game but it can be quite demanding on most hardware and you can still get a pretty decent experience here even though we did need a little bit of help from AMD's FSR. Running the game in 1080p with a medium preset while enabling FSR 2 with a quality setting, we managed to get an average of 60 frames per second with a 1% low of 47. Overall, the system performed exceptionally well across all of those games, providing a 60 FPS experience, which is absolutely fantastic. So there we go. This little system is really impressive, particularly when it comes to gaming. It's performed a lot better than I expected it to do. You can definitely get a 60 FPS experience on a lot of modern games, maybe not the latest latest things like Alan Wake 2 and things like that but people that are buying these kind of things are probably not wanting to play all of the games and you've got to have a set expectation this one completely blew my expectation I didn't expect it to perform this well at all you do have to have a mixture of settings and stuff but that's perfectly fine it is making games playable at a playable frame rate with a playable resolution so I am pretty impressed this thing is really awesome I want to thank B Link for sending it across for us and asking us to take a look at it it has absolutely impressed me. I'm definitely going to be looking at using it going forward. We're going to keep it around in the studio. We're going to test some more games on it, test some newer stuff, see how far we can really push it. But apart from that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content. And I'm sure as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one.